Okay, hello. Uh, today there is no guest on this episode of The Light of Insight. It is just me, Nina, that's going to have a solo podcast episode. And I'm a little bit intimidated because I have never done a solo podcast episode and it's a lot more vulnerable. But I really wanted to have this um, episode where I can just share my story and the why behind I created this podcast and some tools and insights that I've been using in my life that have truly been healing and transformative. So I'll just first begin with who I am. I'm Nina. Um, I am originally from Missoula, Montana, and I grew up there for all my life, actually. Um, born and raised and lived there until I was 18 years old. Uh, my mom is from Japan. Maybe you can notice I have some Japanese in me. And my dad is originally uh, from Montana. So born and raised in Missoula to Japanese mom, an American dad. And I moved to California for undergrad. I went to the University of Redlands and lived in California for a few years. And for an exchange program, I moved to Tokyo for one year and went to Waseda University. And I loved it so much. So after my um, undergraduate program in California, I moved to Tokyo. And that's where I am now. And I'm doing a PhD program. I graduated from a master's program at Waseda two years ago, and I continued on with a PhD. Yes, I'm questioning my sanity too. Um, and I'm in my second year of a PhD program focusing on US-Japan relations and the politics uh, behind that really interesting relationship between the two countries. So yeah, that's kind of like the quickest story I can give you, but I know there's going to be more times that I can unfold my story further and my background further. But for now, I really wanted to focus more on the reason why I started The Light of Insight. Um, and I've been able to share bits and pieces of that story with my past uh, podcast conversations. Uh, specifically with Chuni, which is episode number two, and with Master Bhikkhu Kasapa, which is episode five. And they're both um, Cambodian monks and um, are really understanding of meditation and mindfulness. And I went on a Vipassana meditation, silent meditation retreat, two years ago, actually, when COVID started to become a thing. And, oh my gosh, that's actually almost three years ago. So I went on the meditation retreat in February of 2020. So I guess right when COVID started. Um, and I knew it was going to be a challenge because it was 10 days of silence and just meditating. And I've never <laughs> not talked for a day. Um, and this was a 10 day experience, silent meditation. So it was kind of a big, I guess, challenge. And it was one of the most transformative, incredible experiences of my life so far. So what the Pasana meditation is, is you try to seek, re seek reality and understand truly what is happening in a given moment. So we're trained to focus on sensations in our body, starting from head to toe. And when you breathe, even those sensations that you feel in your nostrils, you have to pay really close attention to. And those are just the beginning steps of this meditation practice. But also what comes with this meditation is thoughts and understanding of the monkey mind. And the monkey mind is this interesting concept where everyone has it. We all have thoughts that are always just 
racing through our minds, even when we want to have peace, even when we're on that vacation and we're sitting by the pool, but for some reason you just can't stop thinking about the future. You just can't stop thinking about the past. That is the monkey mind when you just cannot let it all be peaceful in there. So during that 10 days of silence, I learned about my monkey mind, which is extra noticeable when you can't talk to anyone or distract yourself with anything. And that's another thing I wanted to note during the meditation retreats, you don't have any contact, of course, te technological um, availability. You can't use your phone. You can't use your computer. You can't even bring your phone actually with you. They take it away <laughs> at the front desk. They're like, okay, I need your phone and any other thing that can distract you from being with yourself. So yeah, there's just no distractions when you start to um, want a distraction, if that makes sense. But anyways, during this meditation retreat, I learned about the monkey mind. And most importantly, I learned that there was a lot of things from my past, from my childhood that really that I didn't know were really still hurting me until that um, meditation retreat. Because every single meditation session and every day you wake up from, you, make, you wake up at 4 a.m. and the first thing you do is you go to the meditation hall and meditate for two hours. That's your morning meditation. And then from there, you have a light breakfast from like six to seven and kind of walk around and stretch. And then you go back to the meditation hall and you have your morning meditation practice and that lasts for like three hours. <laughs> and then after that, you have your lunch and you're able to stretch. And given this is in a beautiful area in Japan called Chiba in the woods and by nature. So it was really nice and relaxing to take a walk. But in those moments of meditation, which you were doing for 12 hours in a given day, it is a lot of discovery of who you are and what you have gone through in your life, because that's the only thing that you are able to kind of think about at first is who hurt you. Um, but the goal, of course, is for meditation to understand that those thoughts, those memories, those pain points that are still a part of you, um, you can notice them in your mind, go passing, go passing by in your mind, and you can understand that given the day, they might be heavier and more painful. Um, but the goal of this meditation is to observe those thoughts, acknowledge them, and then let them go peacefully. You don't want to hold on to those thoughts because those thoughts can add to your anger, your mood in a given moment. They can take away the presence in a moment. They can take away from your health and happiness. So it was a big learning experience for me because I realized I was not able to fully live presently um, in moments or within relationships, that's even more difficult to admit um, because I was holding on to pain from the past. So, yeah, the Vipassana meditation was a huge springboard into my understanding that I needed to really go deeper into my um, healing, reflection, and personal growth journey. So after that meditation, um, I went straight back to, it was during, uh, I think, a winter holiday. So I had like two weeks or three weeks off. And then I went straight back into my master's program, finished my master's dissertation, turned it in, submitted it, got my master's degree, and went straight on to my PhD. And there wasn't really any time to breathe or reflect on how profound that experience was. And then about a year ago, I 
started to do a lot more digging and journal writing. And I found this program and it's, it was actually introduced to me by one of my best friends. Her name's Mackenzie. And she sent me this podcast all about neuroplasticity and manifestation. And this program and school, I guess you can call it, is called To Be Magnetic. I'll post the details of this um, down on the comments or information um, of this podcast episode. But To Be Magnetic by uh, the founder, Lacey Phillips, is this manifestation school that uses the understandings from psychology, neuroscience, epigenetics, and energetics to guide people on a path that is authentically whole, real to that person. The whole goal of this, these programs that are created by To Be Magnetic is for someone to find their authenticity and manifest the things, the people, the career, the whatever they want in life that is authentically um, real to them. We all want things that we think we need, or we all want to have these careers that we think we really want. But is it really for you that, is it really you that wants that? Or is it really your mom? Or is it really your dad? Is it really you trying to impress a friend or a family member? Like it really forces you to interrogate your belief system. And I, yeah, so after I started doing To Be Magnetic, and it's almost been a year and a half now, I've come to so many realizations about myself, and I've been able to filter out a lot of things in my life that I actually never really wanted or filter out a lot of things about me that I did that I thought was me, but it really wasn't me. Um, and let me just explain that a little bit more. Uh, so the whole manifestation school is split up into many different um, programs that focus on one specific, I guess, theme. So the first I guess the two major themes that they um, advise people to start out with is first the inner child, inner child wounds and inner child blocking course, and then the shadow, the shadow wound or the shadow course. And they want you to start out with inner child because childhood, <laughs> childhood is a time that uh, we all um, learn a lot and we carry probably the most memories and pain from that part of our life into where we are now. So for example, inner child healing, there might've been something that you picked up in childhood or learned from your peers. You learned from your mother, you learned through your relationships with your brother or sister, or how your parents treated you you pick up things in childhood and they'll always be somehow a part of you in your adult life as well. And if that's positive, that's great, but there's actually a lot of negative experiences that we face during childhood. So for example, a big thing from my childhood was people pleasing and perfectionism and with people pleasing, it was kind of something I think a lot of little girls can relate to. I was put in dance ballet classes from a really young age. I was um, the older sister in the family. I have a younger brother. So I always was um, told to be really good for my, to be a good role model, to be good to my younger brother, to take care of him at dance classes, all the, um, dancers in the school were fighting for attention basically and trying to be the best and wanting the approval from the main dance teacher. So you're always trying to please, you're always trying to impress. In my family life, I was always trying to impress my parents as well. 
through academics and I always wanted to be the best and get the best grades at school and all of these moments in childhood with dance and family and peer groups and school life, it all boiled down to wanting to please the person with um, the adult role in the relationship. So my dance teacher, my mother, or my, my teachers. So that all happened when I was young Nina. And I never really gave it too much thought until I started doing a lot of journaling and learning through these inner child workshops. It's like I, in my life now as a 26 year old, who um, I never really thought, never even gave people pleasing that much thought until I learned about it. It's like, I have people pleased my whole life though. And I really needed to work through um, the roots of why people pleasing provides me with safety and the consequences though of being a people pleaser. So I'll go more into, I actually want to make a whole like podcast episode specifically um, around like people pleasing and what that is and how that shows up in one's life and what someone can do in order to work through um, the chronic people pleaser role. So that's a, that's a huge major inner child um, wound and takeaway that I had that I've been working through. And so there's inner child and then the shadow workshops um, are super, super deep. And um, I mean, all these workshops are really hard to do, honestly, because they require tons of reflection, a lot of time reflecting in journal writing. They give you a lot of um, really important questions to um, think about and write about in your journal. And then from there you go and do a deep imagining. And this is where the neuroscience and neuroplasticity comes into the workshops. It's you go into these deep ima imaginings through hypnosis and it's kind of like a meditation where Lacey, the founder guides you with her voice and she's trying to get you into a hypnotic state. And she tries to bring up these memories from childhood or certain times of your life that have been really triggering to you. But during those memories, the neuroplasticity part of it is you're trying to change your, and I wrote it down in my journal. So I don't, so I don't um, explain neuroplasticity incorrectly. So let me, let me just raise my journal a little bit higher. So, so you're not changing your memory of the experience, but the emotional intensity and response to that experience. So it's not about erasing memories or trying to forget about them. That's actually the opposite of what you wanna do with these workshops. It's you're changing your memory by showing up as a higher version of yourself or bringing someone that you really trust and feel safe with during that memory. So if it's like a childhood trigger where you were really hurt or bullied, you go back into that memory rewire it with a higher version of yourself or someone that you really trust and feel safe around. And that higher version of yourself says something that you need to hear in that moment. And that eases the emotional intensity from that memory. That's neuroplasticity. Um, I haven't explained neuroplasticity the best of the best. And I will definitely link some more, um, articles or podcasts that I think you can listen to if you are interested in this, but that's kind of the idea of it. And it's incredible. I've seen immediate results by doing these um, deep imaginings with backed up science of neuroscience and neuroplasticity. So um, with all these workshops, uh, I've been really finding <laughs> why I am like I am, like with my friends or um, when I am triggered in like a romantic relationship or when I get angry at work. Um, 
you just start to like really piece together the puzzle of who you are through the, the, these reflections and through these journal prompts. So yeah, I also really wanna talk about <laughs> how important journaling is to me and it always has been a really therapeutic practice. Um, and I can't see, but I have like all of my like journals just popped up open here. And I actually had such a great idea for Light of Insight. And I wanted these solo podcast episodes with just me, where I actually t talk about like what I'm journaling or any types of journal prompts that are specifically really, really um, powerful or helpful for me. I want to be able to share them with you guys and also talk about kind of what I've written about as well. So I want to end this podcast by giving you actually some journal prompts that you can write um, and reflect about. And I have mine <laughs> all written here. And might I add, like with journaling, I think I've talked to a lot of my friends about this and I have a lot of friends that are just like, oh yeah, I don't think it's really for me or it's just something that I kind of have writer's block <laughs> when they start journaling. It's like journaling shouldn't be something that you bring your um, perfectionist perfectionism into. It's all about um, kind of getting it to know yourself better and it's a way to unpack a certain situation or trigger or something that's bothering you in your life. You really can understand through journaling like what it is you are needing to work through. And it, you don't even need to write like complete sentences. Like take my example. I have tons of pages in my journal that just says brain dump. And I just don't even write complete sentences. I just write down like thoughts or concepts or words. And it's super, super helpful and powerful. But um, the journal prompt that I really want you to think about right now um, is a safe space that you have. It can be an environment or a safe space, like a person that you have in your life that whenever you are with or whenever you are there, it provides you with safety, security, and comfort. And you can always just think about it and it brings you so much, like, it could be passion, excitement. Um, it could bring you um, feelings in like your heart area, like warmth. It can feel super light and I've been thinking about this a lot because um, in the To Be Magnetic workshops, there's a unblocking challenge, they are calling it. And one of the journal prompts and um, challenges is to discover your safe space. Um, so you can always refer back to it whenever you're in an anxious mood or a depressed time, you can always refer back to it whenever you need it. And I've been thinking about my safe space a lot and my safe person a lot. And I've come to it and I'm really proud of um, what I've been able to uncover uh, thinking about these questions. And for my safe space, it's going to be um, Montana nature and places that are very green and luscious and have a body of water. So I thought about um, the lake cabin that I grew up at when I was young um, at Flathead Lake with my family um, and looking out at the stars at nighttime and just feeling so, so present and happy. Um, so that's my safe space. And my safe person is actually the higher version of myself who actually I already embody. She's already here and she's already with me, but the higher version of myself is someone that's calm, someone that is present, someone that is 
fearless and understands when to surrender and let go because that's where she can really truly discover her like path. Um, yeah, my higher self is someone that I'm still really trying to think about and embody. Um, but she's definitely there. And I think I want to end this by saying like the light of insight, I named it the light of insight, not just be, not because I think I have all of the insight in the world and I know everything about wellness and meditation and all these tools in order to live more happy and healthy. No, it's called light of insight because through experience, whether it's mine, whether it's a guest I have on the podcast, everyone has incredible insight through their lived experience. And I think that the insight, one of the major insights that I have learned in the past year is that we all are, we all um, have already like what we need inside of us and a part of us. It's just like society or conditioning that has told us we're not enough but I'm trying so hard to like relearn that that's not true. So I want light of insight to be a space where it's like my personal journey of finding exactly my whole authentic self and understanding that I am already enough and also bringing in incredible guests that are able to express their journeys and um, their tools that they use in their lives in order to live more presently, more grounded, um, more compassionately. And I'm super excited to um, be on this uh, fun podcast journey. And I'm really excited for y'all to listen to more episodes. So thank you very much for listening. And I hope you all have a, a wonderful day, um, morning, evening, wherever you are in the world. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.